Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with five investing strategies that have beaten the stock market. Five strategies that will show you how to pick stocks and outperform the S&P 500. In fact, this top strategy here returns more than twice the market average for its level of risk. In this video, I'll show you why even buy and hold investors need an investing strategy and how to create one that beats the market. I'll then reveal those five strategies to pick stocks that you can use right now. We'll be counting up to the highest performing investing strategy and show you exactly how to set each of these up, but you can find all of these on the Composer platform, a new automated investing platform based on rules you set up to pick stocks to buy. Like maybe buy 10 shares of Amazon every time it dips 10% or adjust the portfolio into the fastest growth stocks every two weeks. But again, you can set up any of these strategies yourself, just adjusting your portfolio based on the criteria that I'm gonna show you, but Composer makes it totally automated. You can click through any of the strategies to see the returns, risk, and if you scroll down here, how the strategy is set up and run. And the best part is you don't need any coding experience here. It's easy to use and you can even back test your strategies to see how they would have done. It's totally free to use, so look for the link I'll leave below and check it out. We're getting started on that first strategy, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Our first strategy here is one of the simplest, the Dalio, built off the all-weather portfolio of legendary investor Ray Dalio, founder of the world's largest head fund, Bridgewater Associates. And the idea with this one is just a simple once a year rebalancing where you adjust your portfolio back to set percentages in each investment. So you can see here, you start with these five ETFs in these percentages and every year you sell what is increased and buy what is lagged to get your portfolio back to those percentages. The idea here is that you're gonna be selling what's expensive and buying what is cheap with a mix of assets that, that's gonna do well in different economic environments. And you can see how that's worked in the chart here. While the portfolio hasn't boomed higher with a huge return, it also hasn't crashed, only posting a drop of 14.6%, even when stocks fell 50% because, because it's got that exposure to bonds and other investments. The next strategy here takes a little more risk for a much higher return. The risk-on, risk-off leveraged S&P 500 basically uses the treasuries and bond market as a signal for, for when to invest and has done really well with an annualized return of over 40% in the last decade, easily beating the S&P 500. And this is a quarterly strategy. So every three months, you're gonna compare the 60-day return on the bond market using the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF, that's ticker BND, against the 60-day return on the Spider one to three month treasury bill ETF. That's ticker BIL. Now notice though, this is important. That is not what you're investing in. Comparing those two returns is just your signal for whether it's a risk on or a risk off environment for stocks. So here, if that bond market fund outperformed over the past two months, then it's risk on and you invest in the ProShares Ultra Pro S&P 500. That's ticker UPRO. That's a leveraged ETF that seeks to double the return on the stock market. So if the treasury fund did better though, it's gonna be a risk off environment and you're gonna hide out in those iShares seven to 10 year treasury bond ETF, that's ticker IEF, for the safety you need until conditions improve. Now we're gonna get back to that list of strategies, including one that has returned 41% a year, but, but I wanna talk about that sharp ratio because this is a hugely important concept that most investors just don't understand. You see, when we talk about investing strategies, hell, any Yahoo can just put together a strategy of just investing in the highest risk stocks out there, those penny stocks or, or even the high growth tech with the potential to double your money or more. But in the stock market, there is no return without the risk. And these kinds of strategies risk your entire savings. And just look at what's happened to shares of the ARK Innovation Fund, that's ticker ARKK, over the last year. ARK is down almost 60% from its peak, lost more than half of your money because it's chased those stocks without looking at the risk in the strategy. So then the way we measure a truer return on a stock or an investing strategy is with the sharp ratio. That's a way of finding the best strategies with the highest returns at the lowest risk. Now don't freak out here because this is actually a lot easier than it looks here. Here you see the formula. On the top, it's just the return of the portfolio or the strategy minus the interest rate on the 10-year treasury. Now we use the treasury rate here because it's the return you could get with absolutely no risk. So here you're finding that extra return you get on a stock or an investing strategy above the no risk investment. Then you're gonna take that extra return you get and divide it by the risk in that stock or the strategy. 
and we measure that risk with the standard deviation. And, and we're not gonna go into the math on that because unless you're a numbers nerd like me, it's just gonna put you to sleep. More important here though is I just want you to get a feel for what this is telling us. You've got the extra return you get on that investing strategy on the top, that return above the no risk treasury investment. Then divide that by the risk so the extra return adjusted for how volatile that strategy bounces around on any given day. And with the sharp ratio, the higher the better. For example, the stock market, that S&P 500 index has a sharp ratio of 0.64 because it's got an annual return over the last five years of 13.9% and a standard deviation of 18.8%. So you just plug in those numbers there with the 1.85% treasury rate, you get 13.9 minus 1.85 and then divide that by 18.8, which is the 0.64 Sharpe ratio. I wanna get back into that list of investing strategies, but you'll see here, they all have a Sharpe ratio over 1.0, well above the S&P 500, in fact. So think about what that means, and I think it's all gonna click in for you. A higher Sharpe ratio means you're getting more return for the level of risk. For example, that first strategy, the Dalio, only produced a 7.7% annual return, but it does it on so much less risk. When the S&P 500 lost almost 50% in the 2008 crash, this strategy would have lost less than 15%. So adjusting for that risk, clearly the better strategy. Nation, I know we're going way beyond what you usually see on YouTube. And yes, it would be easy just to throw a list of stocks at you to buy, like, like all the other channels, but this is how investing really works. You need to be thinking about your investing strategies this way, understanding things like that sharp ratio. You know, anyone can make money when the market is booming. It takes this kind of analysis to make money even when stocks are falling. Here's a strategy for the tech investors out there and one that can help you better define your momentum investing rather than just trying to guess which stocks to buy. The big tech momentum strategy follows the biggest tech stocks by their 20 day returns and has produced nearly a 41% annual return at less risk than the overall market. And this is actually a really simple strategy. Uh, this one adjusts on a monthly basis. So each month you go back and find the previous month's return on nine of the market's biggest tech names here, how well each did over the last 20 trading days. And then you invest in the top two for the next month. It's a pure momentum play, riding those winners from month to month in names like Amazon, Google, and Nvidia. Now we've still got two more strategies to reveal, but I wanna get your opinion on this as well. What is your favorite investing strategy? And Nation, sorry, but buy and hold isn't what we're talking about here. And buy and hold is how long you hold your stocks, basically forever, but, but it is not how you pick your stocks. And here, besides getting your input on strategies, I wanted to bring this up because I see a lot of investors out there just jumping back and forth, buying whatever they hear about on YouTube, whatever the flavor of the week in stocks happens to be. Whether it is value stocks or growth or momentum or, or any of the strategies here, folks, you need a defined strategy of which stocks you're gonna look for. It cannot be just some what some Yahoo on YouTube is talking about, even if they do look great in a bow tie. So, so think about this for a little bit. Then let me know in the comments, which do you think is the best investing strategy? Our next investing strategy, the hedge fund, is a lot like that Dalio, and it's a simple quarterly rebalancing strategy. So anyone can follow this. The idea here is you invest in two totally different assets, like stocks and bonds, but using leverage for that higher risk-adjusted returns. You can see the results here, producing a 35% annualized return with a lower risk profile for a much higher sharp ratio. We've just got two funds here, so it's a very simple rebalancing strategy. Every three months, you just adjust your portfolio back to these weights. You've got 55% of your money in that ProShares Ultra Pro S&P ETF, that's the ticker UPRO, and then 45% in the Direxian Daily 20 plus year Treasury Bowl 3X, that's ticker TMF. So what you've got here is both of these are leveraged ETFs, trying to get two or even three times the return on that benchmark, whether it's stocks or treasury bonds. The idea here is that when the market is doing well, you get that two times return on stocks with the leveraged S&P fund, and when the market tanks, you get the 3X return on the bond fund. We're coming up on the last strategy, one that has returned 41% a year on a risk-adjusted return of more than twice the market. But I wanted to give you some comparisons here to see how the other investments and these strategies work. Over the last five years, gold has produced a 9.7% annual return on volatility of 13.4% a year. So 
actually not too bad. A little lower return than stocks, but less risk for a sharp ratio of 0.59. Now the total stock market, using the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, that's ticker VTI, has produced a 13.7% return on a risk of 19.6% for just slightly better at a ratio of 0.60. For its part, the bond market did the worst here. Using the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index, ticker BND, we get an annual return of just 3% on volatility of 5.1% and a sharp ratio of just 0.23. So low risk here, but the return was just so low. Best here was the tech stocks and the NASDAQ using the Invesco QQQ Trust. That's ticker QQQ with a 20.8% annual return over the last five years on volatility of 23%. We got a sharp ratio of 0.82. So higher than any of these, but still lower than our seven strategies. Our best investing strategy though, producing an annualized return of 41.5% and a sharp ratio of more than twice the market. The three seasons portfolio is designed to maximize returns and minimize drawdowns in three distinct market environments when the market is rising, when the market is falling, and on a consolidating market. Now, this is also the most complicated strategy, adjusting each week based on the seven-day max drawdown on stocks in the S&P 500. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics here, but you can see the exact detail on Composer and then set it up for yourself. So each week, if the max drawdown on the Spider S&P 500 Trust, that's your ticker SPY, if it was below 7% for the week, then you put half of your money in this sub-strategy one and then the other half in the non-leveraged two. And both of these are gonna be laid out here. If that drawdown on the S&P 500 was more than 7% then, so that would be a very risk-off point in the market, then you're gonna hide out in this gold and the inverse strategy. Now for each of these sub-strategies though, you've got another question to answer and then this is gonna tell you which ETFs to buy. For example, in this gold and inverse sub-strategy for when the market is crashing, if that three-day return on the ProShares VIX Futures ETF, ticker VIXM, is above 7%, then you put your money in that because volatility is just going crazy. If the return on that VIX fund is less than 7%, though, then you're gonna hide out in the Spider Gold Shares, that's ticker GLD, until you get that risk on signal from the market. Check out Composer with the link below or click on the video to the right for the five best investments for 2022. Five investments I'm making right now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.